today we'll do chapter 10 uh, merging market developing economies and advanced economies emerging market developing economies and advanced economy what are the differences what makes emerging market attractive for international business assessing the true potential of the emerging market and also to identify some of the risks and challenges in the emerging market and as a management of the firm how they can formulate the strategies for the emerging market. So, we are going to repetitively use the term emerging market in this today's class. Let me explain to you what is a merge again, eh? a merge. Let us take the C, eh? this is a C, C level, eh? C level. Then um, let us say you encounter some iceberg, eh? iceberg, eh? iceberg, this is iceberg. So, you can see that suddenly there is a, a tip in the iceberg, tip of the iceberg, where you do not see this all the time, but when the iceberg grows, where you can see when it comes above the sea level, you can see the tip of the iceberg. Huh, we call this a merging, a merge emerge then become emerging, emerge then become emerging economies for example. Huh? So, this is a literally definition of the emerging this part here, where you do not see in the past, but now you can see not in the past, currently you can see, huh? currently exists, not in the past, currently exists. So, that is literally we can call emerging, that means it is something new, something new, where the potential unknown yet, the potential is unknown. We do not know the future of this new, what are the capabilities of this new thing, what are the strength of the, this new thing. So, this new can be a nation or in a bigger spectrum can be the economy. So, this new, uh, re, uh, let me reiterate again, this new can be a nation or in a bigger spectrum can be a economy. So, this is what I want to explain to you in a pictorial way, what is the meaning of a merge. The new can be the new global challenges, the new I mentioned just now, this new here can be the firm as well, uh, can be the firm can be the firm as well, that is what we are going to see today, the firm. For example, there are a lot of companies, new firms are emerging every day. Example you can see here, like in Brazil, these some of the new firm that has emerged in the economy, in the world where they become the key competitors of the advanced economy firms. For example, Embraer, Sadia and Perdiago Natura from Brazil, America Mobile, Grupo Medelo from Mexico, Renbexi, Infosys, Tata T, Wipro, India. So, Tata is uh, our case study for next week. 
चाइना गैलन हेय चुन्नान ग्रुप कॉपोरेशन लेनवो पर रिवर पियानो दी सम ऑफ द न्यू मर्जिंग फर्म वेर द पोटेंशियल इज अनोन येट Turkey Cock Holding Vestal and Siskem so they becoming the new competitors in the world market in their respective industry the new global challenges the firms over here rapidly they are benefiting from the emerging market how the new firm which i mentioned to you just now are benefiting hugely from the emerging market okay this emerging eh? can be the market as well now market so this new thing can be the nation can be the economy can be the firm and also the market example eh? rapidly growing market some of which are very large for example like um, China these companies going to capitalize the huge growing market where the population is 1.3 billion uh, in uh, China Mexico huge market 100 over million population in Mexico huge market uh. low cost labor these companies going to capitalize on the low cost labor these markets here especially mexico india china they have huge inventory of workforce huge inventory of workforce where in terms of cost they are very low not to say cheap they are very low comparatively to other nations advanced nation or developing nations training ground for competing with global incumbents global incumbents what does it mean in the past with the past incumbent firms normally from developed nation developed or advanced nation or economy in a bigger term economy where we can call them incumbents in the past they still exist but they been formed very long time ago uh, complex operating environment which produce some very capable firms you see here china last time is socialism but now they are moving into capital socialism so they are shifting so it become complex society last time stay in a rural area now they are moving into urban area and they are embracing modernization people are getting more modernized people are started to started to eat fast food people are staying in high rise buildings last time stay in a village now moving into urbanization where they are staying in a high rise building so in terms of societal a lot of changes are happening in terms of economical as well last time is a closed economy now become open economy so when there is a shift of course the environment become very complex ha huh? got it ha huh? so the emerging over here something new compared to the past in the past developed nation advanced economy such as us such as united kingdom are in the past but they still exist but the new economy such as brazil mexico india china turkey 
are posing a lot of new challenges especially from the new competitors such as these firms here where we call them new global challenges and they operate in a such an environment where they have huge market, they have low cost labor, huge inventory of labor workforce, they have also in the transition of the economy, politics and societal where they are shifting from the past. For example, they become more urbanized, society become more modernized, economy becoming more capitalism, so become more complex. Okay. So now we look at some of the key concepts of the economy. So I am talking to you about the emerging market economies, but there are also the incumbent such as the advanced economy as I wrote here and the other one is developing economy which is in the middle, advanced economy, emerging economy and some in the middle developing have not become the emerging yet, they are slower compared to the emerging. So, let us look at some of the key differences between the advanced economy, developing economy and emerging economies. Advanced economy, let us look at the country first, so that you can reflect in your mind, what are the advanced economies in the world? Australia, many of your friends already settled down in Australia, why? Advanced economy, can enjoy advanced infrastructure, can enjoy advanced urbanization, can enjoy advanced modernization of lifestyle. Okay? quality of our lifestyle is so high in those countries. That is why a lot of Malaysians are migrating to advanced economy. Canada, Japan, US, UK and also some other western European as I mentioned to you like UK, huh? France, advanced economies. And, uh, these economies are as some characteristics, for example, post industrial countries, post industrial country means these countries has gone through the industrial evolution, the great renaissance have gone through the, the stages already with high per capita income, high per capita income, there is a lot of Malaysians want to go to Australia, why? Salary is triple, three times higher salary than the what they pay here in Malaysia, that is why people go there, 3 acts of the salary. Competitive industries, a lot of uh, successful industries are from there, Shell, Johnson & Johnson, Nestle, all from competitive industries in advanced economy and developed commercial infrastructure, they have huge better infrastructure. Typically, the richest countries including as I mentioned to you earlier. So, these are advanced economy. So, now you are Malaysia is part of the emerging economy as well. So, if you do not enjoy the emerging economy transition, you can jump to advanced economy. So, a lot of people are migrating to Canada, US and UK and so on. Okay. The other one is developing economy, which is the, the middle one. Low income countries characterized by limited industrialization and stagnant economies such as Bangladesh, Bolivia, Zaire, um, Sri Lanka, Mauritius, Papua New Guinea, PNG. Myanmar, Cambodia, are here. Emerging market economy such as Indonesia, Mexico, Poland, Turkey, China, India, Malaysia as well. These are former developing economies, 
that achieve substantial industrialization as what we are going through now in Malaysia. We have uh, automobile industry is growing, biomass industry is growing, aviation industry is growing, agriculture industry is growing, manufacturing base industry is growing and so on. Huh? Modernization, remarkable economic growth and also population is getting higher and higher. Huh. This tip here can grow in terms of can grow in terms of population, in terms of market, in terms of capital, in terms of growth, in terms of um, inflation as well. So, it can grow in many aspects can be negative can also be positive effects. So, we call that emerging economy the BRIC countries emerging. So, I put there dot 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 that means, it can it can emerge in many perspective population, market, inflation, infrastructure, industrialization, modernization, urbanization, it can keep on growing. That is why I put there dot dot dot. <coughs> so, Brazil, Russia, India, China is the acronym B R I C B R I C. So, these are the countries where we classify as a brick emerging nation, emerging economy, emerging market, emerging firms. So, it can all come from there. So, these countries over here has evolved from centrally planned economy to liberalized market, socialism to capitalism. For example, like China, Russia and several countries in Eastern Europe are called transition, shifting, transition. These countries were once socialist states, <coughs> but have been largely transformed into capitalism based. So, this is where uh, we can identify as were mentioned in your textbook. Huh? This color here, what color is this? Orange. Huh? Advanced economies yellow emerging market and the one in the blue developing economies. So, you can see from this world map here, the blue mostly concentrated in the African continent, the developing eh? mostly concentrated in the African continent developing and some over here Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe, not the Western Europe. Western Europe are more towards develop. The Eastern Europe over here are more towards developing as well. So, those countries over here as, you, as I mentioned to you, uh, those in yellow are emerging because of the good education system as what we have in Malaysia. That is why all of you are here. Good education system, good emerging infrastructure, good political policies, education policies, industrialization. Many of you can get a job after you graduate. Only lazy people never get a job. Huh? Who are choosy can I, can I get a job? If not, all of you will get a job in Malaysia. Very sure 100 percent can I get a job for sure only lazy never get a job or very choosy never get a job who do not want to get hands dirty can I get a job. Okay? So, these are the some of the um, push factor that push the economy to a higher a greater heights that is what you can witness in Malaysia itself. Emerging market economies about 27 countries with rising economic aspirations, ah, okay. as I mentioned to you for the last couple of minutes huh, or seconds, it is about 
aspiration in terms of education, in terms of government policies, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of good political stability all this we can put under the economic rising economic aspirations. Every day you wake up got food to eat is not it and these all rising economic aspirations. So, about 27 countries with rising economic aspirations that enjoy rapidly growing standards of living. These emerging economy are enjoying rapidly growing standards of living compared to the one I mentioned to you as in Cambodia. Uh, so, some of the lecturers are coming to USM to do their masters and so on and most of the lecturers do not even have a PhD, do not have PhD, only some have masters. So, they are coming to Malaysia especially to USM to do their masters and PhD. Okay. So, you are very lucky as an emerging economy evolving towards wealthy nation status GDP growth above 7 percent most of the countries Mexico, China, India, Malaysia, Malaysia is 5 percent 5.5 percent GDP growth like India 6 percent China just dropped little bit not so much normally they are above 7 percent and for reason quarter they drop from 7 percent to lower 6.5 6.98 lower compared to in the past, but generally the GDP growth is above 7 percent. Importance in the world economy is increasing as attractive destinations of export, FDI, sourcing and so on. Examples are huh? Hong Kong, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, South Korea and Taiwan have developed beyond the emerging market stage. So, this, these countries have superseded the emerging economy. So, they become already become a developed nation by now. All right. So, this is some of the comparison between advanced economies, developing economies and emerging economies in terms of population, in terms of average per capita income, share of world GDP, population, population of world uh, percentage and what is the population in terms of millions, telephone line per 1000 people, personal computers per 1000 people and internet users per 1000 people. Let us do some comparison. Now, you tell me look at the data, I will ask you some questions, you will tell me which market has the highest internet user? Advance, developing or emerging? Advance, yes of course. Which is the second? Emerging, eh? let us look at the number, not so far you know, 700, emerging 400, so they will catch up soon they will catch up soon. For example, like China now a lot of uh, urban dwellers already have access to internet. India even remote areas already started to have internet. So, this number is growing will grow to 500 will grow to 700 even will supersede the advanced nation soon. Okay. Uh, now, you let me know which economy has the highest population percentage of the world. Emerging 62 percent of the population of the world come from emerging economy, advanced only 14 percent you see here 62 percent of the world population come from emerging economy. Of course, nah. let us look at the 15 percent. Uh, in 15 years ago, Malaysia population only eight, 18 million, now 27 million is growing very, very fast. Okay. So, these are some of the um, complexities 
uh, in the emerging economy compared to the advanced economy. Uh, now let me know in terms of population millions highest which economy is the highest emerging let us look at the number here 896 million only over here wow look like this is 4x you know easily 4x easily 4x of the population come from advanced economy what does it tell you this population what does it tell you what this tell you this number will be the potential users of internet this number potential users of the food being processed in the world potential users of clothes potential users of technology potential users of many 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 items gadgets mobile phone so they are the huge consumer of the world so the huge consumer of the world come from where emerging market that's why most of the companies as I mentioned to you earlier the firms we call them what global challengers are growing so fast because of their market is so huge so huge if one of you can start a company where you can attract the market you become millionaire instantly do you agree with me you can start a company today because we are an emerging market is not it Malaysia you can start a company where you can attract the consumers you become millionaire instantly because of the market that we have in Malaysia 27 million if 27 million minus the babies minus the school going children maybe we have 10 million example if 10 million can buy your product you become cost of the product one dollar one dollar so you get 10 million sales in a day example huh? or in a month minus your expenditures you can make one million 10 million buyers 10 million sales after minusing expenditures you can make a million in a month so if you can produce such a product that is where these companies are very successful as I mentioned to you earlier for example like Tata from India what Tata does what Tata produce Huh? Tata produce nano car nano nano car how much the price of nano car US 3000 only 3000 huh? you translate to Malaysia ringgit how much RM 10,000 isn't it one car only cost 10,000 that is why Tata is a richest country a richest country richest company in India because they can sell one car for 10,000 ringgit Malaysia and is in US 3,000 so just imagine how many people in India can buy this car so that is why Tata already a successful richest company in India but when they build this car they can make instantly million in a day instantly because of the product everyone can buy so you can do that you become an instant millionaire in Malaysia no need to finish the business degree in USM no need then you come and teach the class tell about your success to the students over here can isn't it can right yeah that's why successful people in the world never finish their degree program isn't it like the Facebook founder Michael Dell Bill Gates 
never finished their degree program. Because while studying like this, they got the idea and they go start the business and they become millionaire and they have been called by the universities to come and give lecture. Isn't it? So instead of sitting there, you come here. Wonderful, isn't it? So all is the ideas, la. idea is very important. So you are in the right time, right place, you can fly. So this is why happening to these countries, uh, these firms, we call them global challenges. Huh? Let's look at the advanced economy versus emerging market. In terms of GDP growth rate, in terms of GDP growth rates, look at Australia, so low compared to Peru, China, India, Argentina, Russia, you see or not? EU, EU, European Union, huh? yeah, they are not doing so well. France, UK, Germany is the only country doing very well in European Union. Germany and UK, I can consider UK as well. Because of the Queen, la. Queen very strong in UK. Eh? Uh, the Queen is very strong in UK. And also Germany, Germany very good because of the fundamental very strong. Rest are not, not doing very well. France, Italy, um, Portugal, Ireland, not doing very well. Okay? See here, you can see by yourself, Japan even negative. But we have students going to Japan, you know, to do what you call it, exchange student. Country doing negative GDP, what do you want to learn from them? Go and learn from this, countries are doing extremely very well in terms of GDP growth and learn from them, how do they grow, what are the new industries have been innovated, how the technology been advanced. China for example, let me show you some uh, facts and figures about China. Huge population, 1.3 billion, rapidly growing economy, big importer. began pursuing market reforms in the late 1970s, achieve explosive economic growth. You see here, explosive, you know, why they use the word explosive? Really explosive, the economic growth, growth huh? quadrupling its GDP during the succeeding 30 years, already the world's second largest economy, not up to date. In fact, it's the first largest economy. Number two is US. However, has poor business infrastructure. These are some of the things you are pulling the country down, infrastructure. But no more true. The uh, business infrastructure is growing, uh, improving, re uh, regulations get, get becoming better, red tape is been reducing trend. So, they are doing very well in those areas. Inter, uh, intellectual properties have been governed okay? and look at the consuming power that they have in terms of steel, in terms of food and so on. Huh? But they have other issues, so for example, like pollution okay, and so on. Huh? If you go to China, you cannot see the sky, huh? you can see the sky, you cannot see the cloud. Because there is no cloud, <laughs> because all full with pollution. Because the industries in China are using a lot of energy burned from coal, coal, huh? coal. So, because of the energy come from coal, all the, the what do you call it, the smoke goes to the sky and it covers the whole skyline. That is why the pollution rate is very, very high in China and they do not have a good infrastructure to dispose those waste. But now they are doing well, eh? but they are still up not to the standard yet. What makes emerging market 
attractive. What are the important perspective about emerging market? As I mentioned to earlier, population, modernization, technology, advancement, all this can be repeated now. Huh? First, emerging market has target market. Many huge middle in classes. Middle class means what? Middle class means all of you after graduate you will go to middle class. Income in the range of 25,000 to 50,000 middle class you will be here. But if you do not finish your degree, you become rich. Agree or not? You do not agree, eh? yeah. Because this is our mindset. Our mindset says what? Finish degree, we become rich. Wrong. Finish degree, you become middle class. So many have huge middle class. This is what I meant over here. Huge middle class. With significant income of for buying electronics, cars, healthcare, services, countless other products. Okay? Is he or not? With significant income for buying electronics, not significant la. Reasonable income. Huh? Remove this word here. It is a very strong word. No, not significant. Reasonable income for buying electronics, cars, healthcare, services and countless other products. Okay? So, many exhibit high economic growth rates. So, this is why we call emerging market as a target market. That is why a lot of companies are going into emerging market because of the huge middle income group in the emerging economy. Why? because of good education, good institutions that creates a lot of graduates who can buy those products. Okay? Next, emerging market as manufacturing base. Yes, I already told you earlier, they have a good quality labor with reasonably low cost. Many are home to low wage, high quality labor for manufacturing and assembly operations. Many, Mexico, China, Turkey and so on, Malaysia, many have large reserves of raw materials and natural resources, uh, steel, land, steel, land, um, uh, gold, all come from emerging economy. Money, who asked for money, where? No need money, no need. Lease. Yeah, you don't have to own the land. You can lease the land and pay monthly and you can grow all this. Don't have to buy. Okay? And a lot of companies in Malaysia giving um, we call seed money. Huh? Seed money. Seed money. Or we call them angel investor. Angel, you know angel investor, you know angel or not angel, what do you call angel in Basam Malaysia? Malakad, <laughs> yeah, we, are, we got angel investor in Malaysia where they give money to you free for you to start business, yeah, we have in Malaysia, we call them angel investor, but you must give them the idea what you want to do. You go and tell them the idea, they give you money, you take the money, go and start the business and make tons of money and they don't even have to give them back. We call them angel investor. Seed money is you have to pay back. So you have government agencies are giving seed money. Eh? All right. So this is what happening in the emerging market. A lot of companies are becoming very big because of this kind of opportunities. Okay, we already covered the target market, we already covered the manufacturing base. The third one is 
emerging market has sourcing destinations. Sourcing destination means MNEs have established numerous call centers in Eastern Europe, India, and Philippines, and elsewhere. Call center means, for example, if you call a bank, the call center is perhaps most probably is in India or is in Philippines because of the sourcing, outsourcing. So, emerging market also becoming the outsourcing destinations. They outsource the certain services to the third world country such as India, Euro, Philippines, elsewhere. Most of the banking sectors are using, insurance sectors are using these countries as the call centers. Why? Because they are talented. India is talented in terms of IT. They can speak good English as well. Same goes to Philippines. Dell and IBM outsource certain technological function to knowledge workers in India. Are you a knowledge worker? IBM for example like I, uh, Dell go to India because they can give the outsource contract to the knowledge worker because people in India are very IT, uh, no, they are IT knowledgeable and they can speak good English, we can call them knowledge worker where they can um, advise the customers accordingly. Are you a knowledge worker? Uh, you are a knowledge worker when you go into the workforce. Intel and Microsoft have much of their programming activity performed in Bangalore, India because of their knowledge work, workers abundance in India. But why they do not come to Malaysia? You say you are a knowledge worker, but why they go to India? Okay, cost one of the factor because Malaysians demand higher pay. We already go to the level higher than other countries in terms of wage, eh? wage growth. So, we are not so, we are not no more lower. That is why many countries, many countries are going to other nation with lower uh, wages such as India. Eh? Investment from abroad benefit emerging market, they lead to new job production capacity, technology, global marketplace and so on, sourcing destinations, estimating the potential of emerging markets. Huh? What are the potential? Remember I told you one uh, over here, potential is unknown, we do not know. We do not know the potential of this emerging economy. It can be high, it can be moderate or it can be low, we do not know. So, how to estimate the potential of emerging market? How? Estimation are challenging because of the peculiar economic and social environment in these countries. Limited availability of data, limited market research and it can be very costly as well. And we can use some of the statistics for example, like the GDP growth rate as I mentioned to you earlier, income distribution here yeah, we can use it, unemployment rate population number, we can use those statistics. And over here, uh, we also want to use a different measurement. For example, uh, we want to use PPP. What is PPP? Purchasing power parity. So, we want to use purchasing power parity GDP, not the normal GDP because it already take into consideration the currency and the standard of living in those. Okay, for example, here this is a per capita GDP conventional, this is per capita GDP using PPP, that means you already using the parity, using the cost of living and the market exchange rate. For example, like uh, US is almost the same, Turkey PPP is higher, South Korea is higher, Hungary is higher. So, normally this per capita GDP reflects the real situation of the GDP growth of the country. So, using the PPP is more accurate. Ah, just want to talk to you about the middle class. Now, you tell me which country has the highest middle, middle income. Ah, look at this number here. This is country middle class population percent of income by middle class. 
which country has the highest middle income in terms of population wow 587 million you know we are talking about 27 million in malaysia just look at it 587 million po no population you know middle income category that means uh, these people will buy car isn't it these people will buy furniture when they buy new house what do you do when you graduate buy car isn't it buy house isn't it then you have to buy furniture right so you are the biggest consumer in the future so if you can open a business to cater for you wow wonderful so uh, second india that's why <coughs> this nano car very popular in india you know why because the car only rm 10000 can you find in malaysia an rm 10000 car even a bicycle also rm 10000 ready in malaysia no a bicycle there a bicycle is 10000 but you cannot buy a car in malaysia 10000 ringgit but in tata in india they selling car 10000 ringgit malaysia just imagine these 534 million can buy the nano car and in india people are buying the nano car very very high you know why because nano car is very small very small i think this size only from this chair to this chair very small and this car can go to the village and the village don't have our road like our in malaysia road are very small especially can go in between the paddy farm you know paddy farm uh, in india most of the rural area a lot of paddy farm so the car can go in between the paddy farm go to the village and they don't have a bigger road like in malaysia so this was the nano car very popular in india so you must do a car that fit into the what they demand and the infrastructure is small so they do a small car who will buy car middle income why they buy car because family after they get married they got children especially in india after they got married they will have one dozen of children <laughs> isn't it so they have to buy a car sure they must buy a car that's why tata become very successful okay yeah? after india indonesia that's why hey asia went to indonesia why after they get a job they will fly a lot of indonesians are flying now a lot of indonesians are flying because the middle income is huge last time is very small why indonesians in the middle income is growing because of education because of urbanization modernization infrastructure is growing so people after they work they will start to fly asia went to indonesia to capture this 105 million middle income malaysia got how many million population only 27 million middle income maybe 10 million or below 10 million you know so these are the reason why asia went to indonesia 10x of malaysia consumer in indonesia 10x you know is very huge that means uh, asia can earn the income in indonesia in a short time 10x you know 10x okay then the rest is you already know mexico and so on thailand 28 million very huge ah huh? okay turkey also very high turkey brazil 65 million russia 67 million so these are the reason why the country firm can do very well because of the growing middle income 
three criteria for assessing the attractiveness of emerging market and developing economy. How, what are the criteria do we use? Which I already mentioned many times. Number one is market size. How big is the market? Huge. Emerging market is huge market. Market growth rate. For example, 7 percent is the reference point. Market consumption capacity. The consumption capacity come from where? Middle income, middle class, they are the one buy a lot. Why they buy a lot? Who eat a lot? Rich or the poor? Or the middle income? Rich don't eat so much. The middle income eat a lot. Why? Because rich don't have many children. The middle income will have many children. As I told you earlier, Singaporeans are rich. So they don't eat so much. Why? Because they have less children. Middle income will eat a lot because they have a lot of children. You see, you know, this is a, a true fact, you know. Okay? Of course, the poor, la, poor also will eat, but they are self sustainable. They will grow the plants near their house and they will not buy from outside. That's why poor, the consumption rate is lower compared to the middle income. Middle income, all are working people working adults. They have no time to grow anything by themselves. And uh, commercial infrastructure is growing, for example, like uh, internet, telephone line, mob mobile phone usage, economic freedom, they are getting more open compared to last time. And the country risk in terms of political risk, in terms of regulation, <coughs> they are getting better and better. Okay, now you let me know. In terms of market potential index, in terms of market size, growth rate, intensity, market receptivity, country risk, where is Malaysia? Do we have Malaysia here or not? Uh, oh, no, in Malaysia. Maybe I should get another set of data with Malaysia. Now you tell me which country rank number one in terms of market size? China. In terms of market growth rate, China. In terms of economic freedom, China too. Overall index is number one. Number two is Hong Kong. Number three is Singapore. Number four is Taiwan, Israel, South Korea and so on. And Turkey, yeah? one of the successful Islamic country in the world. Turkey, they are the number 10, number 11, number 11. Huh? And Poland is in number 10. So, there are some of the challenges doing business with the emerging market, huh? political stability. But I can assure you, those emerging market already have a good political situation. If you compare with Singapore, sorry, if you compare with China, India, Malaysia, we have a good political system. Political stability is not a question anymore. Weak intellectual property may be, but we are improving as well. Bureaucracy, red tape and lack of transparency, we are also improving. For example, like China, India, Russia, they have a lot of issues on piracy, but they are improving. They are in the midst of transitioning. Poor physical infrastructure, yes. And partner availability and qualification, that means who want to partner with you? If you are very good in terms of physical infrastructure, you are good in this, you, are, you have a good regulation to protect the intellectual property, then people will come and partner with you. If not, who will partner with you? And also, most of the firm in the emerging market are family business. For example, like in South Korea, we call them chebos because they have good connection with the family conglomerates, uh, Latin America and Turkey. They are very closely knit firms and they are majority of family business, family oriented business. So, if you want to do business with them, you have to be very good in terms of credibility, in terms of financial worthiness. This is some of the companies I showed you earlier. This from Turkey, South Korea, Siam Cement Group. What is this? Huh? Ah. 
then LG, Dawu, Mahindra from India, Tatung, I should put Air Asia, Maxis, uh, Gunting. Okay, some of the strategies for doing business in emerging market. Ah, this is important for you. You need to customize your product to unique emerging market. For example, like Nanoka. Customize so that Nanoka can go into the rural area. Customize. Partner with family conglomerate. But you must show your credibility. Target governments. Huh? Government buy enormous quantity of products. So you have to target your go the government of the emerging economy as a bigger purchaser. And skillfully challenge emerging market competitors. The only way to compete with them is find the right product for the middle class. Then you can be successful. And also the labor force must be in terms of cost must be comparably lower, relatively lower and must be skillful. Knowledge worker for example, huh? then we can achieve can be some of the strategies for you to enter the emerging market. Catering for the emerging market economy development needs, increasing firms are involved in fostering economic development, assisting economic development might be part of the effort aimed to corporate social responsibility. So companies are also becoming more corporate social responsible, uh, doing business in a very ethical way and also they become helpful ventures include modernization of projects, infrastructure projects, building the nation. Okay. These are the, some of the catering to the emerging market economy development needs. So, as a citizen of the emerging market, you should not run to the advanced economy. You should develop the market rather than run to the advanced nation. That's what happening to Malaysia. It's a brain drain. Why you want to go to the advanced nation? Help the country to build. This is what we're trying to say. But of course, so you have to compensate with the lower salary. Okay, this some of the foreign firms support local economic development. Huh? For example, like Walmart, Unilever, CMAX. They are provides low cost building material to millions of poor people. This is what they're doing now. Unilever sells shampoo in India for less than 0.02 dollar. All these are CSR activities. Huh? Uh, Various cell phone and telecom firms have substantially increased telecommunication infrastructure in Africa, for example. So, these are some of the CSI activity by the foreign firms in the emerging market or in the developing market as well. Okay, come back to my question. As a student, where you should go as a exchange student, international exposure, where you should target? Advanced economy. Emerging economy or developing economy? Emerging economy. So, that you can go and learn and come and do it in your own country. 